Is there something about you right now that provides immediate well-being and relief? Well, yes, there is. <laughs> um, in balanced view, we call this open intelligence. So the capacity to know, the capacity to experience what's looking through your eyes right now, what's listening to me speak. That, that baseline quality is the same for every human being on the planet. And the way we recognize open intelligence is through one simple practice. Opening... I've been doing this for like seven years and I've just forgotten it. Short moments of open intelligence, <laughs> repeated many times, become continuous. So what that means is, whenever we remember throughout our day, we relax and acknowledge what's looking. Now what, we, what, what, what most of us have done in our lives is rather than focusing on open intelligence we focused on the data the thoughts the emotions the sensations um, and we've tried to find well-being in life by rearranging the, the data so and basically for most people what this means is we want to cultivate and hold on to positive data we want to modify and eradicate negative data and there's lots of neutral data that we don't really think about so much so the constant game of life is like a sorting machine trying to get more positive and less negative, essentially. Now the data of every human being, the thoughts, the emotions, the opinions, the belief systems, the assumptions, it's much easier just to say data, isn't it? That's different for every single person on the planet. Now the folly of humanity is to believe that peace is going to come about by making everyone have the same data. Now, if you've ever met any identical twins, I've known three sets of identical twins, they look identical, they're genetically the same person, but you could not ha have two different people. It's the most incredible thing. They're totally different people in terms of their data. And so it's very clear that the drive, the great drive of humanity to find peace by making everyone believe the same thing it's just not going to work. It's a disaster. Now the great thing is about you as an individual sitting in this chair right now is that you have an exact working model of the entire human race. The, the way it works as a society, as groups of societies. And you're probably thinking what on earth is this man talking about? Now basically the way you treat yourself conventionally trying to eradicate negative data, hold on to positive data, is, is exactly the same as human society as a whole. If, if, if we as a country don't feel safe because another country is acting in a, in a particular way, then we all see the results of the solution to that problem. It's, uh, at best, it's things like economic sanctions uh, and really, really... Um, heated rhetoric and criticism. At worst, it's, it's war and bombs and terrorism and things like this. But the motivation is always the same. We don't feel okay. If we can modify this situation, we will feel okay. And on and on and on, for probably about the last 15,000 years, humanity has done this as individuals and collectively as, as bigger groups of people. It's so obvious. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like, it just, it does not work. And I, I remember there's, there's a newspaper I saw in India. It said something at the top. It said, if you want peace, prepare for war. It's, it's something that's, that purports to be profound and meaningful, but it's just, it's worse. It's worse than bullshit. You know, bullshit serves quite a lot of really profound purposes. You can plough it into your garden. You can, you, can, you can dry it. Here in India they dry it and they use it to cook. So it's actually really beneficial. Whereas a lot, a lot of humanity's bullshit is just, is just uh, 
really, really destructive. Now, basically, what we've been doing as individuals is preparing for war within ourselves. And my experience of this is, if I'm happy, I know for sure this shit is going to hit the fan sooner rather than later. This happiness isn't going to last long. You know, am I, am, is this relationship going to be here in two weeks or whatever? And I even, I've shared this before, but even, you know, in, in the act of, the beautiful act of having sex with an intimate partner, th thinking about, you know, well, will we still be doing this in a month's time? Maybe it's not good enough or I hope we're not doing this in a month's time. You know, just, just, uh, just uh, not, not being present at all, just constantly at war with my own data streams. And so in, in this training, it's very, very simple. It's not, it's not an esoteric mystery. It's not, it's not difficult. It is, however, very profound. What we're doing is rather than focusing on the data, and trying to sort it like a sorting machine in order to find well-being in, in ourselves. So, and that usually involves indulging, avoiding or replacing things. Instead, we just let everything alone, just leave it as it is. And the instruction of, of short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times until it becomes continuous, is the way we do that. So, what that means is, in, in any situation we're in, whatever the sensation is, whatever the circumstance is, we have a choice. We can either relax and acknowledge open intelligence, what's looking, or we can indulge, avoid or replace our data, which is what we've been doing for decades. So it's, it's, it's important to see what a wonderful instruction this is, because it, it, it absolutely means that nothing about you needs to change in order to practice. So I, I used to think things like, well, I have to get rid of my anger, sexual desire, and then I can relax as open intelligence. But I don't know if you've noticed, but things like sexual desire pop up quite literally at the most inconvenient moments. <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm relying on open intelligence rather than saying what's in my head right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> so it's very, very powerful, you see, because what we start to see is a powerful discernment that allows us to act from a space of, 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 of true wisdom. So in my experience, I was so full of self-justification and intellectual knowledge. One of the ways that I, I tried to find well-being with people that I met was to prove how much I knew and that my, my ideas were better than their ideas, and I was very good at doing that. It was very effortful and it didn't, it didn't really produce anything other than a feeling of smugness or paranoia in case I met somebody that knew more than me. It was uh, just, uh, just a, a total contrived way of behaving. Um, you know, trying, trying to second guess what other people think about me. And, and, and so what happens is when you start to give yourself the great gift and the great gentleness of relying on open intelligence, you start to see through all of your strategies and what this awakens is a great compassion for yourself and, and a great love for yourself and maybe you might even cry about the, 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 the lengths you went to to find relief and, and benefit for yourself because this is the motivation for... Okay, sorry. This is the motivation for, um, for, for, for every human being on the planet. We want to feel okay. And, and uh, the, way we, the way we've trained ourselves to believe that we, we will find okayness is, 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 is in usually it's the same list for nearly everyone. We want to be healthy, we, we want to have lots of friends, we want to have great sex, uh, intimate partner that's wonderful, uh, maybe children, um, lots of money. And so most of us have probably achieved some or all of these things and we find that, that there is still something missing, there's always something missing. We don't feel okay, no matter how perfect our life is. And so here, here in this practice, in, 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 the, in the Balance View training, like I said right at the beginning, there is something that provides well-being right now, and it doesn't matter how you feel. And what we're doing here is training up that open intelligence. So the simple practice 
of making the choice to just recognize open intelligence, whatever's going on, that's, that's something that you can test. You know, go away today and, and see what happens. When, when somebody tries to charge you 10 rupees extra for your coconut, rather than going absolutely mental, just uh, relax and acknowledge open intelligence. It doesn't mean that the data is going to vanish. So this is another key point. And again, be gentle with yourself. If, if really intense data streams are coming up, you've, you've, you've reacted in a certain way for decades, and that's still going to occur. So it's not like all of a sudden when, when anger comes up, you're going to be, oh, open intelligence, wow. You know, it's not like that at all. Be gentle with yourself. There'll be plenty of opportunities throughout your day that aren't so challenging where you can rely on open intelligence, and that's all that's required. And what you will find by default is that when life throws, throws you something that's, that's uh, very, very either unpleasant or very, very wonderful, open intelligence will be the first thing you recognize. That, that, that will just happen by default. Now fortunately it's not just the, pr the practice of, um, of relying on open intelligence. Like we heard there's a whole support structure and, and the whole support structure is just to support you in enlivening your, your innate perfection basically. So you can test everything for yourself. And this is another great thing about this training. It's not about you believing anything that's being said here, but it is about you being open enough to test what's on offer. And uh, after the open meeting, we've got a fantastic um, information table where you can um, access all of these support structures that you can then test for yourself and then come back and, and, and ask questions about what's going on. Now, my experience is that I just it's just totally amazing. Oh, it's so it's so unoriginal, isn't it? <laughs> Need to find another word. But um, to actually reveal in my experience that everything I considered to be negative in my experience was actually evidence of my perfection, not as some really arid philosophy, but as an actual experience. That comes about by, by firstly recognizing short moments so your life reminds you to recognize open intelligence. But what you, what you start to see is that the data and open intelligence are the same thing. Just like, just like reflections in a mirror are inseparable from the mirror, data and open intelligence are an expanse of equalness. And, and that's the crucial key point. The inseparability of data and open intelligence is what's revealed as an ever-increasing outshining. So, like we heard in, 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 right at the beginning, in order to identify open intelligence in your experience, just stop thinking right now. So there, you've got it, you have it already. You're not getting it by coming here. And by, by training up open intelligence, there's no goal to reach. It's an ever-increasing, ever-increasing beneficial expanse. And you can test it. So it's, like I said, <coughs> test it and see what happens and you'll be given all of the support necessary to re really make this, um, you know, your lived experience in every moment. And like I said at the beginning, you're recognizing, in, in recognizing open intelligence, something that's the same for every human being. And this is how we bring about harmony within ourselves and with other people. And this again is something you can test.